Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Unpublic. For those who are unfamiliar with Unpublic, Unpublic is a show that discovers details about a post made public by our guests. And while we go through with our guests asking them about the post, they will also be answering a general knowledge quiz game. They have to guess three of the four questions correctly. If they fail to do so, they will have to share with us their most embarrassing moments. So I'm very excited today for the guests we have. Originally born and raised in the state of Pennsylvania in the United States, he started his acting career as a young professional in college. After dedicated work, he's now known for his roles in Craig Wright's Green Leaf on OWN Network, April Blair's All American on the CW, and Terry Miller's The Equalizer on CBS. Now, an official member of the Screen Actors Guild American Federation of Television and Radio Artists. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you all Andre Tucker Jr. Hi, Andre. Hi. <laughs> How are you? Good, good. I'm doing good. It's been so long, so long since we last spoke, but I'm excited you're on the show. Uh, I'm glad to be here. You know, thank you for uh, thank you for the opportunity. I wanted to start off first and ask why why did you choose acting, and at what point do you think you realized you could act? Um, so back when I was younger, um, I would say maybe middle school around that time. Mm -hmm. Um, it was something that I've since then is when I felt like I've always like, I, this is something I want to do. Like I remember watching, um, like rush hour, um, rush hour was like a huge influence on me yeah. wanting to be an actor and just being captivated by, um, like Chris Tucker as a, as an actor. Mm -hmm. And, um, then I remember like, um, I started doing Michael Jackson impersonations <laughs> and when I would do Michael Jackson impersonations, um, I almost like, I, I enjoyed people's response to how I, I did it. So then I feel like, you know, that started me wanting to entertain people. Um, and then, you know, watching Rush Hour and how, you know, he would do like Michael Jackson impressions and things like that. And then mm -hmm. um, he was an actor as well. So then I started looking more into like, like the behind the scenes of how they made, you know, like Rush Hour and things like that. Mm -hmm. And then like, that was like, what really started like me wanting to be become to act, you know, and um, there was a, uh, a, a lady um, who's, who goes to my church now or my mm -hmm. church back in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. She um, used to do like these plays and um, she uh, had me in a play. And I just remember like that feeling like, oh, I feel like I could really like do this. Uh -huh. You know, like I feel like it was just like something that um, I enjoyed so much. You know, I had never enjoyed anything like that so much before. So that was pretty much what, what started it. And then it wasn't until after high school in which I like started taking it seriously, you know. Oh, wow. So you did do a little bit of theater before you went into film. Yeah, actually, that's where I started. And um, okay. in 2014, I did like my first official, official play mm -hmm. um, in Harrisburg at Theater Harrisburg. I did a play called uh, the, the Philadelphia Story. Mm -hmm. And um, from that point on, it was like, yeah, I, I really was like, yeah, this is what I'm doing for the rest of my life. Oh, wow. That's awesome. I wish we could see those um, those Michael Jackson impersonation. <laughs> that would have been cool. Um, there's one of them out there floating around from me when I was like seven years old. So. Oh, wow. Yeah, I know. We never know the type of things that are out there, you know, in social media somewhere. Yeah. Okay, so talking about also you coming from a small town. Well, Harrisburg isn't a very small town, but it isn't, you know, New York, London. And so 
I did notice also that you were featured on an article on the Black Wall Street um, Mm -hmm. Pennsylvania article. So there is a part of the article which I really like, which I wanted to kind of share with everybody. I'm going to read through it a little bit briefly, and then Mm -hmm. I want you to kind of explore a little bit more. So it says, in that way, Tucker finds himself gravitating towards characters he can relate to, but he's careful to avoid stereotypical roles for fear that they would stunt his creative growth. Mm -hmm. And then which to which you answered, I haven't necessarily gotten to that point yet. When you're hustling, you take whatever you get, but I'm not looking for your typical stereotype roles. I like finding roles that portray the essence of Black people. Right now, I'm looking for characters I can relate to, but as I do be- as I do better, I'd like to start acting outside of the box. So... I like the way you formulated that. I think it's it was interesting to read that because a lot of people would be kind of not keen to playing stereotypical roles. But it's interesting how you specify that there's specific types of stereotypical roles that you would play now mm-hmm. and you'll be content playing those now prior to stepping outside of the box. So can you explain a little bit more? Um, yeah, I mean, so like you know, like coming into the industry, mm-hmm. you, um, no one knows you, you know, no one knows yeah. who you are. So there are certain roles that people can see me playing right now that, um, could help me, you know, get my name and my face out there. Mm-hmm. But as time goes on, you have to eventually like branch out and not continue to do those stereotypical roles. So like, for right. instance, for an example, like, People could see me playing, you know, the um, the the bad guy or the the angry, the angry guy, whatever Mm -hmm. Um, that may help right now in terms of being able to just get work, um, being able to build my resume. Mm -hmm. But as I continue to elevate in the industry and as I continue to um, make a name for myself, I don't want to continue to play the bad guy or, Mm -hmm. you know, like. the uh the the thug or the drug dealer whatever the case mm-hmm. is because i feel like those are um we've seen those roles so much now right. mm-hmm. um it would be nice to see you know us as african americans or us as black people to be mm-hmm. able to play roles in a higher light you know which right. is why i respect people like chadwick bozeman so much mm-hmm. because yeah. chadwick played you know strong black historical figures mm. and showed showed us as you know lawyers and showed us as you know kings right. mm-hmm. and and you know singers and dancers you know not just someone on the corner you know mm. so that's pretty much where I was where I was coming from I love that I love that you mentioned also some yeah. of those key people that really have kind of showed you some work that you're you kind of are inspired by so that's really cool Okay, so are you ready for your question number one? Sure. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) So your quiz question number one is, who invented the light bulb? Mm. Who invented the light bulb? Mm -hmm. What's it? Uh... I have a name, but I feel like it may be wrong. <laughs> um, was it was it Huey P. Newton? I don't know. I, you, I will tell people at the very end whether or not you've got it right. So you got to tell me an answer now. I can't tell you whether it's right or wrong. Mm, okay. <laughs> um, we invented the light bulb. Um, I'm thinking of Huey P. Newton. That's the name that's coming to mind. What did you say? Huey P. Newton or Huey, Huey P. Yeah. P. Newton. Okay, I'm, I put it down. So ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna move on to our second post. Do you remember this little boy? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Can you go? Wait, how old were you in each picture is there? Um, so yeah, I do actually. Well, 
So the one on the left, I remember um, that was in 2005 or 2000, the year 2000. Okay. Uh -huh. And um, that was, I think, kindergarten, a kindergarten picture. And the one on the left or the one on the right is, I believe, I want to say 10th grade. Okay. Yeah, 10th wow. grade. Um, I know even as a 10th grader, I still look like I was like in sixth grade, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you did look young. And also as a kindergarten, you were really sharp over there. You got a tie. Wow. <laughs> well, I have Good my night. I have my grandpa to thank for that. Oh. As well as um that was a tie that my aunt Lil gave me. Um oh, God was so oh. she uh she gave me that tie, yeah. That's awesome. You know, looking back at these photos, what would you say is one thing you you would say you wish you knew, you wish this little boy knew on this journey that you've had? What is that one thing you wish you knew before you got on this journey? Um, I wish I knew the... Um, amount of consistency it would take to mm -hmm. get you know to a higher level um mm -hmm. being consistent and working hard mm -hmm. um i wish i knew how important yeah i wish i knew how important it would be to like you know have a plan and like really you know stick to that plan right mm -hmm. um yeah that's that's one thing i wish i knew i like that Okay, so quiz number two. What is the chemical symbol for silver? Mm -hmm. So think back to your table of elements. Silver, the chemical symbol for silver. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Man, you are. <laughs> wow. Really? Science is like my worst. <laughs> it's like my worst. Um, I, I asked okay. you, remember, I asked you, I said, is there any topics you wouldn't want? Okay, I'm, I'm open to the challenge, though. Um, <laughs> All right. Was it. Hmm. Was it A G? Is it A G? Yeah. I'm gonna write it down. Okay, going on to wrong. our <laughs> next post. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so this next post here. Um I titled this the Tay Diggs post because as for some people don't know, but um Tay Diggs is, if I should say, my um second IBM, a second ideal black man. But um <laughs> very handsome guy. You're gonna have to deal with a lot more pressure than her when you got this stadium full of screaming fans. Five minute water, y'all. <laughs> okay, so tell us a little bit first, um, a little bit about the scene, your character, and also I wanted to know what was it like having that working relationship with an experienced actor? Um, so one it was uh, an amazing experience um, being on the mm -hmm. set of uh, uh -huh. All American. Uh -huh. um, from the director to, you know, the, the AD to everyone mm -hmm. that was there. Mm -hmm. um, my character, pretty much, I was trying out for the, uh, the football team because they needed okay. a new kicker. Uh -huh. And my character uh, was trying out for the football team to be a kicker. 
Um, not really the best kicker, as we can see. And um, <laughs> he's being heckled by um, a uh, um, one of the um, actresses in the, that particular scene by uh, mm -hmm. Kiana. Um, she's pretty much just heckling everybody and, and um, <laughs> You know, giving them a hard time. She gives my right. contract a hard time, and um, you know, he has something to say about it. But yeah. um, it uh, was an amazing experience. You know, working with um, Tay Diggs, mm -hmm. very uh, stand up, stand up guy, <laughs> um, very humble, mm -hmm. um, and uh, a good worker too. You know, a really good worker. So it was, it was a great experience. Something I will cherish forever. Mm. Would you say that when you work on or when you work with a production that's a lot more experienced versus a new production, would you say you feel different, you act different, or what would you, how would you compare those two experiences? Um, definitely, you know, you feel, you definitely feel different because mm -hmm. it's such a, a, on a bigger scale, you know, it's mm -hmm. not like an independent Right. Movie or you know something where the crew size is not that big and also this is on you know a major platform mm. um, you know and you, you one thing i'll say about all american um for sure they treated me like i felt like i was the star of the show you know the oh. way they treated me mm. um you know and and i i think it was just more about that than that the actual acting itself you know, because regardless whether you're in front of two people or you're in front of 200 people, like acting is is acting. Right. You know, um, <laughs> but as far as like the overall production side and that, mm -hmm. you know, from that aspect, um, it, you definitely feel a lot different um, knowing that, you know, a lot more things are involved. Mm -hmm. you know? So that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad it, you don't seem like you got overwhelmed by that experience. So that's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> Question number three. So mm. we're getting to it. This one, hopefully, it's easier. <laughs> what is the hottest planet in the solar system? Mm. <laughs> what is the hottest planet in the solar system? Ah, uh, yeah, you got me today. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, man, hottest planet. Uh huh. Mm, I'm gonna just say Saturn or Venus. I'm gonna go with Venus. Venus. Yeah. So. Every guest, I have them provide three advice to different people within your industry. Okay, mm -hmm. so I'm going to start off with the very first person here. This is someone who feels like they're like there's no light at the end of the tunnel. They're very, um, how should I say? They're not. They're not happy, perhaps, with where they are, where they feel mm -hmm. like they don't have enough. Um, enough passion, if I should say, or perhaps they feel as if just things are not working out. What would you say? I would, me, I'm real big on my faith, personally. Mm -hmm. um, having belief in God, um, that is, uh, I feel like that's the main thing for mm -hmm. That I would say is just having belief in God and um, you know trusting and believing that you know His plan for your life is mm, right. Out. Um, Cause I'm even dealing with that now, you know, just mm -hmm. um, not necessarily feeling like there's no light at the end of the tunnel, but you know, this industry there's you know there's peaks and valleys. Yeah, and, highs and lows. Uh huh. Um, there's a lot of highs and lows, mm -hmm. and um, you just have to keep going and knowing that what you're doing is um for a bigger um it's bigger than you mm -hmm. and you just have to continue to keep moving forward and regardless of what it looks like or what it may seem like knowing that 
where you're trying to go, you're eventually going to get there if you continue right. to put one foot in front of the other. A newbie in the industry. So someone who just started, they're excited or however, what is that the best advice you would give to someone who's new? Train. <laughs> train. Mm -hmm. Get into a class. Mm -hmm. uh, train with, um, you know, whether you're in L.A., New York, Atlanta, wherever you are, get into an acting class because um, like there's people that you're going to be going up against who are trained at some of the top schools um, mm -hmm. and you have to you have to train. So that is the, the best piece of advice, train and then headshots. This is someone who's thinking about making a big move, either from one city to the next or from mm -hmm. one state to the next or maybe out of the country. What mm -hmm. would you say? What would you give us their advice? Because obviously you went from Pennsylvania to Los Angeles. So what, mm -hmm. what would be your advice? Do it. Don't. If you have that desire, mm -hmm. if you have that itch, like I'll tell you this much. I've wanted to move to L.A. since I was like five years old. Oh. <laughs> since I was five years old. And mm -hmm. no time will be the right time. There's never going to be the right time. Like, oh yeah, this is the right time because mm -hmm. like you'll be waiting forever for that perfect moment, you know, or that perfect time. So just do it. You know, um, mm -hmm. we try to wait for, to have this amount of money or to wait for all these things to fall in line when you have to just go for it. Because if you don't, you'll be sitting around forever mm -hmm. waiting for the right time. And that's, kind of the the pitfall that I have found fell into at first mm. you know, because I was waiting for that right time or that right moment of everything has to be right when that's not <laughs> going to be the case. So mm. just go for it. I think that's the one thing most people think to their minds. Like I'm not yet ready. I think there's things that I have to adjust first, but yeah, I've, I've realized also a lot of the, actors as yourself who have been able to make it have mm -hmm. had that moment where they just risk it all they just went mm -hmm. right and obviously it isn't easy as you said the highs and the lows are there but just going it is very scary going at it without knowing where yeah. you're gonna be where you're gonna live all those things yeah <laughs> absolutely a lot of people don't know this but like even when I moved out here, me and my uh, my brother, he helped me move out here. Uh, my brother and he um, helped me move out here. And when we were in Oklahoma, my car broke down. I had to get a whole brand new car on my move out to California. Wow. So this was in the middle of COVID. Mm -hmm. And I was just so ready. Like, you know what? I can't be around here in Pennsylvania no more. Like to really mm -hmm. do what I want to do. Mm -hmm. I just have to go for it. And um packed up everything in my car and um I had like all my clothes and small stuff and um me and my bro we just we left uh because he was in like around the Philly area so I drove down picked him up mm -hmm. and um we drove out to California oh wow and it's crazy I didn't know you did this in 2020 and to look yeah. at the amount of success you've had in so many short years. Yeah. That's awesome. So I think the move itself was a huge part of your success. Yeah. Okay. So your positioning was the the crucial point. Yeah, for sure. Um, and you know, that is very, very important as well. You know, you have to be, I think you have to be where where your blessing is. Mm -hmm. um, you have to be where where your blessing is. You know, you if you're supposed to be in New York, you know, you're not going to get what's for you in New York if you're still in Texas mm -hmm. and trying to make everything work in Texas. You mm -hmm. know, um, I don't feel like that itch or that desire that I've had for California since a little kid just comes out of nowhere. You mm -hmm. know, I feel like that was a, you know, um, that was a, a seed planted from the most high. Right. To, you know, this is where I'm supposed to be. I'm very proud of you. I'm I'm happy also to see the success. I get to see it on on Facebook. You post it every now and then. You let us know what's going on. So that's really cool. Oh, thank you. Okay. Thank you.
Question number four, I'm going to tell you slogans of companies and I want you to name the company based on the slogan. There's three slogans and you have to get at least one of the companies correct, okay? So this first slogan is think different. Which company do you know that is from? Think different. And these slogans are very well known, like all throughout the very world. Well so, done. Mm -hmm, yeah, so they're very, they're quite popular companies. Think um, different. Um, <laughs> there's like two main slogans that I know. And okay. that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, think different, think different, think different. Uh, <laughs> yeah, literally think different. <laughs> mm, I know it has to be like some type of tech or something. <laughs> um, mm, say, no, I know it's not Nike. <laughs> Apple. I don't know. You said what? Apple. Okay, I'm gonna put it down. Okay, the next company slogan is taste the difference. <laughs> Think different <laughs> and taste the difference. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> He's like, that sounds like the same company. <laughs> Same thing. Taste the difference is the next mm -hmm. one. <laughs> so I know we're talking about a food company. Um, taste the difference. You said taste the difference, right? Mm -hmm. Taste the difference. I know I've heard that before. <laughs> um. Hmm. Um, I don't know. You got to pick something. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to say like Applebee's. Applebee's. And the very last one is have it your way. Burger King. I know that one. All right, people. So let's find out if Andre has gotten all answers correctly. If he didn't get three of the four, we're going to hear his most embarrassing moments. But uh, so let's get started with question number one. Who is the inventor of the light bulb? I know that's wrong. So he said, let me go back to his answer. He said, Huey P. Newton. Incorrect. I knew that it was is, wrong. <laughs> it is Thomas Edison. Yeah, Thomas Edison. <laughs> that was the first name that popped in my head. Oh, so, really? <laughs> for the people that are watching and saying, oh my God, <laughs> Huey P. Newton. Like, that was the first name. If Michael Jackson's name came to my head, I would have said Michael Jackson. <laughs> Okay, so you're trying to salvage yourself. Okay. <laughs> All right. So the second question is, what is the chemical symbol for silver? He said AG. Correct. You know your stuff. Okay. Mm. <laughs> All right. Number three. What is the hottest planet in the solar system? Okay, so you said Venus. Correct. It is Venus. Good job. <laughs> so the very first company slogan was think different. He said Apple. Correct. Is that right? I'm like, okay. Do you have an Apple? Are you team Android or? I'm um, team Apple all the way. Ay, ay, ay. All the way. Well, I'm team Android. That's not cool. Uh. <laughs> the next one tastes the difference. You said Applebee's. Incorrect. It's Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola, okay. Yes. 
Yes, indeed. And then the very last one, have it your way. You said Burger King. Correct, the Burger King. <laughs> Those ones are pretty easy. I think I should have made it a little hard. I did see something that was really hard. I was like, uh, the driving machine. Do you know which uh, which company that is? Driving machine? The driving machine. I know it's a vehicle. Yeah. <laughs> Audi? No, 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 not Audi. Um, Tesla? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's BMW. Okay, okay, mm -hmm. yeah. So, Andre, we are at the end of the show. I wanted people to know how can they contact you, perhaps you, your website, your agent. Go ahead and let them know. Uh, yeah, you can uh, mostly probably like Instagram, which mm -hmm. would be Andre Tucker Jr. or at Andre Tucker Jr. Um, also, um, Facebook, you know, I'm on Facebook, Andre Tucker Jr. Um, and like IMDB, um, Andre Tucker Jr. pretty much here. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, definitely. If you want to connect with Unpublic or let us know of anyone who you think should be on the show as well, make sure you connect with our guests of today and we'll see you at the next episode of Unpublic. Thank you guys.